really. Um, not one, but two great referees, or one referee who became a great agent for WWE. Uh, Dave Hebner and uh, Tim White sadly passed away. Um, great memories of the both of them. Dave Hebner's spot. I think we all remember as kids, Renee, the spot with El Hebner and Andre pinning there, Hogan, and with a referee such a and they accused El Hebner of having plastic surgery. Uh, these were the good old days, the storylines, but Renee, you was in the company while Dave was an agent. Uh, we'll speak about Dave first. What's any fun interactions with him? He was the um, he was like the money guy, the guy they trusted to get the money from the gates of the house shows and stuff every night. And he'd always be the one sitting at the table, and he'd pass by. You want a draw? You want a draw? Need some money? Because they gave draws back then. I think they extended that uh, a year or so after I left. But if you wanted money, they'd give you a draw. You just write your name, and then they take it off for the weekly check, right? Right. But, uh, yeah, he was always cool. Earl was more the hyperactive, you know what I mean? Like, crazy guy. Like, yeah. both good, good, good dudes. I think they got x after uh, they got caught, like, uh, with the T-shirt deal, right? They were... Uh, Printing out T-shirts like counterfeit WWF T-shirts or some shit, making money on the side. That's what WWE said, but uh, my brother told me about this a year or so ago. He said El Hebner done an interview and said, "Why would I do that? I was making such a great living with WWE." Um, so I don't know if that's what happened, or or El in the interview said, "No, that's not what happened." But I don't know if he actually gave the reason why it happened, but. He said, and it's true, like, he was with WWE for so long. He was the head official. So, I don't know. We don't know. But that's the rumor. Like, it was because they were selling counterfeit T-shirts. Yeah. So, um, well, condolences. And obviously, uh, Brian Hebner is a friend of the show. And um, condolences to your family. And Al, hopefully, you're all doing well. And uh, hopefully, everything goes okay. And, fortunately, um, Tim White passed away. And... Tim White yeah. was one of the threes I remember as a kid, and someone who was a lot of fun in the locker room of it. Nah, he was a really, really good dude. Really good dude. He was from Boston, right? <clears throat> well, he used to be Andre's handler. That's right. So he'd always drive around Andre and, you know. But, yeah, Tim was um, – oh, everybody loved Timmy White. He was a good referee, too. I remember he tried to make a comeback because I think he blew out one of his shoulders, right? That's why he had to take time off, and then he tried coming back, but his shoulder was just gone. <clears throat> Couldn't do it. But, um, yeah. Right. Yeah, I was just a young kid at the time, so, like, I would, all those older guys, I'd go for them for advice, you know? Being a small-town French Canadian kid, you know, living in the United States, I'm still naive to a lot of things, right? So a lot of those guys helped teach me about life. You know? mm. so, and he was young, man. What is he, 68? Yeah. That's fuck. He was 68, and I think Dave was only 73. Yeah, I think I actually sent you a picture of Dave like a few days, like last week as well. I said he doesn't look great. and Parkinson's, right? Something like that, yeah. And um, yeah. it's horrible. I mean, you know, me as a fan, Renee, obviously I I'm always upset whenever I see a wrestler die, but when it's a referee... I'm like, oh man, I remember watching these. And like Tim White, like Dave Hebner, like I I probably knew him more as an agent because that's why because he was like way before me. And I always knew Ella Hebner, but Tim White, who was someone who was always on TV, especially the attitude era. And um, like if I had a Mount Rushmore referees, like Tim White is there along with L, uh, Lil Nate and uh, Mike Kyoda, I think they're my four favorites. You know, all the, I got along with all the referees because, I mean, there's no there's no competition. There's no professional jealousy. It's like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and the referees are just there to, you know, do their thing. And... Uh, did they... yeah, it's, uh... I mentioned to you before, like, I interviewed Sean Mooney on my channel, and he, the best advice he got was uh, from Gorilla, and he said, fact, don't, you can hang around with them, but you'll never be one of the boys. Is that the same sentiment towards referees or is referees more accepted because they're in the ring with yous? I think there's a line there 
the one guy who probably could cross that line is who are, uh, I can't wait to interview is Mike Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they always ask these questions. Who was the last guy standing at the bar? I'm surprised his name doesn't come up because he was the first and last guy at the bar, dude. Bro. But, um, yeah, there's still, there's still a line. I mean, they're, they're closer to the boys than than like an interviewer or a backstage, you know, worker or something. But yeah. there's still, you're still not taking them. I mean, they did take some bumps. But yeah. You're still not one of the boys, right? Right. Yeah. But, um, yeah, and condolences to Tim's family. Hope everyone's doing well. And uh, definitely, they'll definitely be remembered for a long time. So uh, rest in peace. Uh, Pro Wrestling Noah, July 16, Nippon Budokan. Keiji Muto's chosen venue, the Nippon Budokan. The first fight of his retirement streak. The challenger, Supernova Kaito Kiyomiya. Don't miss Keiji Muto's retirement run. Noah, Nippon Pro Wrestling. Keno challenges New Japan Pro Wrestling Satoshi Kojima for Noah Gold, the GHC Heavyweight Championship. And Ninja Mac is back! On top of that, Rob Van Dam in a hardcore rules match. International stream on Wrestle Universe.